Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, delegates. It's a pleasure to uh, give you an update on the achievements that we've made in the past years and actually the past decades on quantum electrical standards as CCEM president. And well, today this, of course, is about electrical units. My presentation, it's about the ampere and about what's coming next, E. So let me start with giving you an impression on electrical measurements in daily life. As electrical metrologists, we contribute to a sustainable society via measurement devices and via providing traceability for measurements on electrical grids, keeping them up and running and ensuring their quality. We uh, contribute to fair trade. We are the uh, basis for all uh, electrical energy measurements. And well, there are some new things going on because there's electrical vehicles. So things like DC metering is on our agenda and was discussed at our last meeting as one of our new challenges. We all have telephones and they rely on telecom. We provide uh, support to the telecom community by improving our RF and microwave measurements and also the reliability of that and going to higher frequencies because we all want higher data rates. And finally, we support innovation. And one example is, for example, nanoelectronics, small devices. And I don't know whether you are aware, but in the real state of the art uh, memory chips, one single bit, the difference between a zero and a one is only 10 to 30 electrons. So we are really approaching the limit of fundamental devices. I was mentioning electrons here. And well, this is about electromagnetic measurements, electrical measurements. So what about the present definition of the ampere? Well, there you are. The ampere is that constant current which if blah, 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 it goes on. I mean, <laughs> even I, as a president, don't know this by heart, sorry. There is current, apparently, but we end up with newtons. So current is related in the end to the kilogram. And the ampere, if we stick to this, will never be better than IPK. I'm sorry, and I think we're doing much better than IPK, as I will explain in the rest of my presentation. And it's really the, say, I think the overall aim of the CCEM community, it was our challenge to improve this situation. And I'll give you an update on where we are. But let me first introduce the CCEM community. We were installed 90 years ago, 1927, as the first CC to advise the CIPM on anything related to electromagnetic metrology. 25 members, meetings every two years, working groups, low frequency and high frequency. But I particularly would like to point out two working groups on the kilogram and on the SI. We have these for quite a while to prepare for the revised SI. There's always a lot of administration going on. And to be frank, I don't like administration. I'm a scientist, so I'm encouraging science at my meetings. So we had scientific presentations on graphene, waveform metrology related to this telecom challenges, and of course, the ampere. We charted, uh, started uh, workshops on our future challenges, and our next workshop coming March will be on microwave measurements. So a significant part of our community is progressing the state of the art. So where are we now? We do have quantum standards for voltage and resistance. So as you can see in the left-hand graph, there is on the y-axis a voltage, and it's flat. It's constant over a certain range of current. And that was really predicted by Brian Josephson, named after him, the Josephson effect. And this voltage relates to frequency of a certain, what you apply on this device. And there is in the middle, H over 2E. So we have voltage related to frequency and fundamental current. On the right hand side, we have the quantum Hall effect. Quite a familiar face seeing, sitting on, uh, on here. Professor Klaus von Klitzing discovered that in a special device at low temperature and high magnetic fields, resistance is quantized. And we'll certainly hear more about that later this morning. H and E squared. So there are two constants there. And what we did, because of this weak link to the kilogram, we decided we'd just say, 
do the best what we can, and then decide on the number we're going to use, which is the DASH 90, the uh, conventional 1990 values. So by agreeing on the value that we use worldwide, we could do very accurate comparison to better than the 10 minus 9 level, whereas the link to the SI, the link to IPK, essentially was only at the 10 minus 7 level, only at the level of one part in 10 million. Recent developments are uh, going on in the quantum standards. Uh, for example, not only do it for DC voltage, but also for AC voltage. And one of the latest developments, it was another Nobel Prize, graphene also shows the quantum Hall effect under quite nice different conditions. The key thing of this slide is this one. Quantum standards are extremely accurate to much better than one in a billion, whereas the link to the SI is only one in 10 million. So that was one of the key things to change. But this is not current. So what about current? Well, we were also working on developing a quantum current standard. And I'll take on the left-hand side, courtesy of NIST, the first real accurate measurements in a small nano-electronic device. So nanotechnology is crucial to, be, to make devices where you can control and monitor really very small currents, actually currents that are manipulated electron by electron. And on the right-hand side, a recent PTV device, much more complex, much more lines and monitoring elements, and you see some measurements really indicating that they are able to control single electrons. We can manipulate, we can tame a single electron. And that's, of course, a much better basis for defining the ampere. So if I want to depict it, this is kind of the idea of a single electron transport standard that we can apply a certain frequency and then have electrons one by one move through the device. So where are we? What is the latest state of the art? On the left-hand graph, this is the accuracy as a function of time, and you really see we made a huge progress in the past four years. We are presently accurate to uh, two parts in 10 million, really a, a breakthrough, in my personal opinion, in the past four or five years, and you already saw the animation. The idea is of these nano devices that you have potential barriers that you manipulate. This is the taming, so that an electron, it comes in, first hops into the middle, and then we kick it out to the left-hand side. So this gives you a current from the left to the right-hand side. So far for current. But as an EM community, we wanted to contribute, sorry, Mars people, to get rid of IPK. So this is what we did. Well, actually, we, it was actually one person, was a key player here. It's the picture of uh, our NPL late colleague, late Brian Kibble. He devised a device, it's a kind of a weird balance, where you compensate the force exerted by the gravitation on Mars, you compensate it by an electrical force. That was not particularly new. But by doing so, you have some parameters in this balance, and he devised an elegant way to get rid of these parameters by adding a second mold to this balance, and that's in the end giving you the famous Kibble equation, where on the left-hand side we have mechanical watt, and there's mass, there's IPK there, and on the right-hand side we have electrical watt, the product of voltage and current. And as electrical people, we know to do what to do, how to measure voltage and current, because Josephson and von Klitzing gave us these excellent physical phenomena to relate voltage and current to quantum standards. And if you plug in the numbers, some math to do for you maybe during the lunch break, um, you end up with H. So mechanical what relates to H. So this is the link between IPK and H. If we go this route of going on fundamental constant, there's a great impact on our community. As I said, we are slightly outside the SI. We are quantum, 
There's IPK there. We're slightly, there's a small distance between IPK and us. And so we are not entirely in the SI. And by going to HNE, we will be back in the SI. However, I told you about these conventional values, the 1990 values. And these 1990 values were quite okay, amazingly okay, to be frank, but not so good as we, would be, we are able to do it today. So our community is the only community where a step change will occur if you decide to go with us for quantum standards. We'll have a change of one part in 10 million in voltage and an even smaller step of two parts in 100 million in resistance. And you might think, is this significant? Or, well, a graph on comparison of Josephson standards, voltage standards, you see much better than one part in 10 to the 9. It's actually the best measurements are one part in 10 to the 12, amazingly comparable way. So that's proving that these, this concept of a quantum a DC voltage standard based on the Josephson effect is really very fundamentally accurate. And if you plot the 10 minus 7, well, this is huge. So any NMI or industry exploiting quantum standards, they'll have to take care. They have to do something. And I'll come to that in my next slide. But on the other hand, if you look to industry, and this is a plot of, a, well, say an industrial voltage standard, an industrial battery, the best thing they can do, they are noisy, they are drifting over time. If you compare this 10 minus 7 to this actual behavior, it's about comparable. So for industry, it's not really detectable. So as a second step, as a second part of our EM mission, of course, we are informing our stakeholders about, well, in general, about quantum standards on making them easier to operate. But particularly for this step change, we have the CCM guidelines for implementation of the revised SI. So how should I handle this step change? Is there something I should do or is there is it all okay? And we published papers to really uh, well, uh, educate our community, the stakeholder community, about what's going to happen, we think. Other outreach activities, I already mentioned the workshop, and we also recently provided some support in current measurement to the ionizing radiation community. A third task of any, of any committee, and also our committee, is to contribute to the global comparability of measurements. And Professor Ulrich was already giving a very nice introduction on, well, that we really need to have the same units worldwide. Well, quantum standards are ideal. They are the perfect way to go if you want comparable measurements worldwide. So we have these, and we are improving these a lot. Um, the MRA was a second step in enhancing the acceptance of the measurement results. I always say whenever you give some administration to a metrologist, they also want to do this to the one ppm, one in a million accuracy. So there was a lot of effort going on. So the first step, last step we did, the third step in the past three years, we cut some of the administration and really increased the efficiency of the MRA. When it comes to global comparability of measurements, the BIPM in our area plays a crucial role. I was showing you the comparison of Josephson voltage standards, and this is run and done by the BIPM. They have traveling quantum standards. They go all around the world to compare their traveling standards to the quantum standards of the NMIs. This is the result, and this is proving that all quantum realizations throughout the world indeed are comparable. They also provide calibration services, and they really served our community very excellently by an extremely efficient performance of another comparison. Comparisons typically take five years. That's what they, we hope they take. Typically take, sorry, eight years. This comparison only took two years. So chapeau to the BIPM. Really thank you for the support. Summary. Our community is continuously working on its key objectives. First of all, advancing measurement science. That's at the heart of our activities. SAT, graphene, but also applied science to social challenges. I mentioned GRITS. That's an activity where I'm personally active in as well. 
We are working and interacting with society and our stakeholders, picking up new challenges, making quantum standards easier to operate, making them turnkey, run at higher temperatures. That's really to help them to also be taken up by the industry. And of course, as NECC, it's crucial that we have compatibility of measurement results. Quantum standards there play a key role once again. And well, it's, as I mentioned already, we are uh, aiming to run this MRA as smoothly and effectively as possible. Precise measurements, quantum effects. There is an extremely nice exhibition here in France in the Musée des Arts et Métiers. Um, it's an excellent exhibition um, with the background of measurements. Well, only the way they can do it in France. I'm really admiring uh, the French people and to all that have contributed to it. C'est vraiment superbe. They give you an explanation on quantum electrical standards. So here are the three units, voltage, resistance, current, with the relevant fundamental constants. There's an explanation there, but to be frank, I'm, I'm really sorry. I was, at one point, I was really disappointed about the exhibition. Because I thought, and I hope I've taken you along a road that you're kind of like the quantum standards. I think, this is really the best way to go. And I think I see some Nobel Prize winners smiling when I'm saying this. But at the exhibition, there's, there's no such thing like a precise measurement. So this for me was, OK, well, if you know, want to know what's behind this, go to the exhibition. <laughs> it's time to wrap up, and it's time to thank people. Because this is science, and advancement of measurement science is all about people. Our community really relies on the inventions of Brian Josephson and Klaus von Klitzing, the Josephson effect, the quantum hall effect. It's the basis of all our electrical measurements. There is a third guy, which I mentioned already, Brian Kibble, crucial in, in thinking and, and inventing a balance to make the link between electrical and uh, mechanical standards. Cont sorry, again, we are contributing to get rid to the, of the IPK. I'm thankful to all the scientists in my community that build on the legacy and their inventions, further advancing it, facilitating to increase its accuracy, its applicability, really very nice, and I'm a very proud president of this vibrant community of excellent researchers. There's a third group I have to thank, and that's the governments. You provided us the financial support and the moral support to advance the quantum standards, to work on the kibble balance. I know that's not have always been easy, so I particularly want to thank all the governments that invested in kibble balances and kept investing it. So that's how we are here today. 30 years ago, our community went quantum, and we love it. It's really the best thing that we can do. But there is a problem. I explained we are, we are not exactly in the middle of the SI. We are one part in 10 million apart. That should be solved. We cannot solve it. We provide you with all the measures to do so. So apart from your moral and financial support, there's only one final thing that on behalf of our community that I would like to really do. So please, members of the states of the METER Convention, please do us a one final favor. <laughs>